Hello and welcome to a short tutorial on using variables. This is a very basic introduction to variables. The example we use will be in SNAP by Berkeley Education. A variable is a changeable value recorded in the program's menu. Similar to how x is used in algebra to represent your unknown, a variable is used to represent information that can change. Variables can only hold one value at a time, though. Variables are used when you need to store information and use it later. That information can be letters or numbers or a combination. You always want to use a good name for your variable. In SNAP, this is the variable menu. There are additional blocks below the ones shown here but these are the ones we will use in our class. The others are more advanced. The gray bar saying make a variable creates a new variable. The set block sets the chosen variable to a value. The change block changes the chosen variable by a numeric value. This only works with number-based variables, not text. You can't subtract one or add one to a word. You can only do that to a number. The show block shows the variable on the screen so your user can see it. The hide block hides the variable on the screen so you can't see it. So let's look at an example program. In this program, you can see that I have three variables, name, age, and countdown. You can see them all on the screen at this time. You can also see them over here in my menus, name, age, and countdown, all with a check mark. If I uncheck the check mark, that is another way to hide the variable. So let's look at the program and predict what we think it might do. When the green flag clicked, our character, our sprite, will say hello for two seconds. That's really very straightforward. Then the character will ask, what is your name? And wait until it receives an answer. The answer block here is a default variable within the SNAP environment. Under sensing, you can use the ask and answer blocks. Answer is always connected to ask. It is the variable that represents the input from your user. So if ask says, what's your name? And the user types in their name, let's say Annie, that becomes the answer. So we set the name variable to that answer because later on we will use another question and that answer will change. Then it says join hello to the variable name and wait for two seconds. So our sprite should say hello name, hello whatever value that variable has. All right, let's see if we're right so far, if we've predicted how this is going to work correctly. So if I press the green flag, it says hello, it asks me for my name. My name is Jenny. So I type that in and I hit enter. Okay, so now the name, the variable name is equal to Jenny, that word, my name. Now he's asking me how old I am. So now the variable answer will change to the value that I enter for my age. And the variable age will be set to that answer. A lady never reveals her age, so I'm going to say I'm five. So, after it asks how old I am, let's look back at the program again before I hit enter and make the variable age equal to five. So it says I'm going to set the age to answer in that block. The sprite will say that's a great age for two seconds. Then it will say I'll count down age seconds in your owner. So I'll count down the number that you put in for your age of seconds. So it will count down the number of seconds you claimed as your age. Then it will actually hide the variable age. I did that just so you could see the effect of that block. Then it sets the countdown variable to equal the age variable. Then it's going to repeat age number of times. Okay, so in this case five and it's going to change the countdown variable by negative one. So it starts at five, and then it subtracts one, 
it waits one second, and it repeats again, subtracting one, waiting one second, and it does that five times until it reaches zero. At that point, the repeat ends, and he moves on to say yay, name, for two seconds, and then the variable age returns to the screen. Okay, so here I am, I put in five, I hit enter, it says that's a great age, the age block disappears and it counts down to zero. It says, yay, Jenny, my name, and then the age variable comes back and the program has finished. Now, because these are variables, when I hit the green flag again and it asks me for my name, if I type in a different name, that's what will appear in the name because I changed the variable. This time, let's say I'm seven. And then it counts down for seven seconds. Let's do this one more time. Asks me my name. It asks me my age. So now the variable age is equal to 20. At that point, it sets the variable countdown to age as well, and then uses that to count down 20 seconds because it repeats the age number of times. If I put the variable countdown in here, then it would wouldn't work because countdown would be changing and it wouldn't know how many times to repeat. So we have to use the age variable in that repeat because that is the number that's dictating how many times we should change the countdown variable and wait one second before going on. So variables are a great tool when programming. They can be used to create counters, you can use them to help you do math, they can receive input from your user. Later when we begin to use the hummingbird, you will use variables with your sensors. Thanks for watching.